Welcome everyone to our new video series entitled Wisdom of the Heart. And what this um, series is going to be about is that we're going to have our guests come on and we're going to actually look at topics in A Course of Love. So it'll be very topic based and we'll look at themes and uh, whatever the our guest wants to share. So I want to um, introduce uh, our first guest for this new series, Tyrone Antoine, and he is joining us from Roehampton, England, which is in the periphery of London. So he's joining us from the UK. So let me welcome Tyrone Antoine. Welcome, Tyrone. It's an honor uh, to have you join us today. <laughs> thank you, Lynn. It's uh, fantastic to be here. Really, yes. Yeah. I'm really really, yeah. It's it's a joy. It's really a joy to have this dialogue with you. And so, just to get started, we're going to look at the third treatise today, uh, chapter five, original purpose. Okay, so it's the third treatise, chapter five, original purpose, and specifically, Tyrone is going to give us some insights and wisdom from his heart on this phrase of emptiness. So I'm going to go ahead and let Tyrone take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Um, so would you like me to start by sort of maybe in introducing why this is such a good topic for me or just to, to start reading? Yeah, go ahead. You can go ahead and yeah, it's free, free fall. You go ahead and do whatever you feel guided to do. Cool. I mean, I think for me, I, I, it kind of helps to set a, a base as to why this is such um, a pertinent topic for me, why this literature just kind of blew my mind and got me. Yeah, it just felt like it, it got me. Um, is because for the longest time, you know, I, um, I felt really broken spiritually. And a lot of that was centered around this experience of emptiness, you know, and, and, and like it says in the book, there's so many ways to reach, you know, through a loss of a relationship, through sickness, through, and this constant experience of returning to the emptiness was like my ego self, you know, told me I was broken spiritually. That's actually, I was supposed to be experiencing abundance if I was spiritually um, fit. And so when I got this first line that said, while you have been, while you have just been told, that you now exist in a state of emptiness. This is not a state to be feared. You know, that reaffirmed one of the, you know, spiritual processes that's been happening more recently in my life where I started to embrace the emptiness and I started to have a different experience around that. Mm -hmm. And so I suppose in the spirit of love and what I want to share is, is, you know, for people who are maybe... Um, experiencing emptiness and kind of um, interpreting it as I did as something um, very antithetical to what spirituality actually is. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, um, yeah. I think um, paradoxically emptiness actually is a, is, is a, in the end, it is actually a form of abundance, but um, I suppose, yeah, I'll come to that. A little bit yeah, later. I love that too. And um, that first sentence you read, I love that. And actually, even um, that last sentence of the first paragraph as well, mm -hmm. all the lessons you have drawn to yourself in your lifetime have worked toward this absence in the hopes of filling the emptiness with the fullness of the truth. And it, and it kind of like for me almost feels like this emptiness I associate it with like a dark night of the soul. Mm. And it's, uh, it's, it's like going into that void, that emptiness where the, the egoic self is actually dying 
you know, the mm. false self, the illusory self. And it, it brings up thoughts of like St. John of the Cross, you know, who mm. experienced mm. the dark, dark night of the soul. And it's, and he actually, he said it was like more than just struggles. It's actually the death of the separate self and this birth into, you know, union with God. Mm. And it's in, in that emptiness, a fullness is born, but it doesn't, mm. you know, it's cause we're always in the embrace, but the thing is we don't always feel it. And um, yeah. Oh, so absolutely. yeah, you want to, yeah, I'm, I'm just throwing in a few thoughts, but you can, I mean, all, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that, Lynn, because you've brought something that I completely, for, you know, forgot about. And, um, you know, it's that thing of like, um, initially in that emptiness, I experienced it as complete isolation. Mm -hmm. You know, I experienced it as being alone, but slowly over a period of time, you know, what I, you know, if you take the word alone and you put it, uh, and you break it up, it also makes the word all one. And it was a really amazing shift when I initially experienced that as complete isolation Mm -hmm. to then shifting to that unity where we've let go of particular, we've mm -hmm. let go of um, sort of relationships as we experience it in the ego self. And we experience this universal connection. Mm. Yeah. And, um, you know, the beauty is when, when I stopped fighting in this or trying to run away from this emptiness, what I experienced is that, the only thing that exists is truth mm. without form, you know, truth in its totality. And, um, and this was the abundance, you know, this was, and so, yeah, I'm really chuffed that you, you brought that last sentence to, mm -hmm. because yeah, the fullness of truth exists in the emptiness, with, but it exists without form. Uh, yeah. And in a yeah. way, my ego self couldn't interpret. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I, I, I think, yeah, the, the love is, is, there's no attributes, you know, it says that love is attributeless and, you know, pure love is formless, but I feel like what I'm hearing in this original purpose is once we move through the emptiness and, you know, I, I see it as like almost like a tomb time, like, you know, mm -hmm. the three days before the resurrection, Jesus was in the tomb for three days. It's like, that's the darkness and it's like a cocoon and we're waiting to be birthed anew. It's like the, the, the butterfly is in the cocoon and then there's transformation and resurrection, a, re a renewal moment. And, um, and so the original purpose is how I'm seeing it is once we, move through this emptiness and embrace this formless love, this boundless love, this, you know, all encompassing embrace, which mm. is, you know, the Christian mystics call that unico mystica, which is mystical union with God. Mm -hmm. And St. John of the cross talks about that, but then it becomes a living alive experience inside of us. And, and to me, the original purpose from what they're saying here. And I, you know, this is only my, my, my take on it. It's my perspective. And this mm. is not about saying it's right or wrong one way, you mm. know, we invite, we're inviting all the listeners and viewers out there to make their own discoveries in it. But, um, you know, I see it that the original purpose is actually we're able to live as Christ as a living mm. breathing expression of love and so it brings the formless into form. Like the, the form is actually an expression of, it's a, of the living Christ. Is, mm. is, you want to say anything about that? I mean, for me, it was, um, you know, it's this whole process of like uh, when my ego uh, expressed my identity, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was constantly trying to find a definition through my masculinity, through my, you know, what does it mean to be a real man? What does it mean to, to be a South African? What does it mean to be white? What does it mean to be, you know, and I was trying to form my identity through all of those, those things that were supposed to be my identity, but they essentially, um, they betray that 
that information always betrayed who I was authentically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the flip happened when, you know, when I entered into the emptiness, mm -hmm. when I really sat in and identified with that space, you know, these things became, you know, colors on a, on a piece of canvas. Um, mm, and I could start painting a picture with them, but they, you know, they weren't, they were no longer who I am, mm -hmm. you know? And so, you know, the beautiful thing of transcending these, these false identities or learning to integrate them in different ways is that in the emptiness, I'm not in this prison that says I'm a man or mm -hmm. I'm this, or I'm that. I'm in this place where I'm constantly being able to express a unique set of colors based on that information, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not, I'm kind of, I don't know if that's cryptic or a bit too um, sort of, but for me, that that's kind of, you know, when, when I stop being of the world, but, I, and, but I'm still in the world. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful, you know, when, yeah. There's a line, you know, when, when your identity isn't formed by your experience that you've lived, but it's ex your identity is expressed as, as who God intended me to mm -hmm. be. Yeah. And, um, and that's such a, um, it's such a powerful sort of transition. Um, and one that is kind of always, I have to say, it always comes as a bit of a shock to me. You know, it's not like I ever can anticipate sort of what he's going to express. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, a shock or just blows me away. You know, it's just, it ends up being such a, you know, such a privilege. To, yeah, I love to just that. Be, you know, know it's, I, and there was another place in here where it, it talked about somewhere letting go of the familiar and i think that's also why emptiness is um so scary and this is talked about all throughout in the course of love you know mm. moving into the unknown you know we dialogue about the unknown not the known and mm. moving into this um this moving away from the known it's freedom mm. it's you know i'm using a, a krishnamurti phrase freedom from the known Yes. And that's what makes it so scary is because we're letting go of all these concepts and the learning and the, and the mm -hmm. idealized versions of the self. And we're moving into this, this darkness. It's like, an, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, in, but, but within that is, is, is the essential self, you know, mm -hmm. capital S. And then, you know, we, when we let go <laughs> and it's scary, it's, you know, being in the void and it's, to me, it's, it's actually a process, you know, it's like, I, I like to say it's a process until it becomes mm -hmm. an instant because I think for most people it's, you know, this is like a, it's a journey, you know, mm -hmm. um, through the dark night and then out, of, out the other side, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's not always easy. I mean, you know, sometimes, like it says, you know, some, sometimes the emptiness comes when you fall in love and, you know, it's sort of yeah. like you, you let go of this false self and, and you're, you know, you're in this sort of like boundless bliss with, with another and you, you only see the love in them, you know, because you're seeing it in yourself, you've opened your heart. And then it says also that um, we've been emptied by lessons of grief and loss of love and so there's for some people there's suffering involved in it um but i think the bottom line is you know as it says in the seventh paragraph that it's all of this is is a gift it's it's something of, of of gift giving and it's not always easy to mm. to dwell in this space of the unknown and it's not familiar and so I get that. It's like, yeah, it's like, and once you're in that, in that emptiness, that darkness, there's anything could be expressed because it's coming mm. from the unknown. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad it made sense. Um, but I think there's two things that really come to mind and, and, um, you know, in sense of like identity, you know, as soon as we 
we def- try and put a definition on our identity. Yeah. We put a false bottom. You know, mm-hmm. we, it's, it's a limited capacity. And, um, you know, as soon as like we try and define who we are and form a mental perception of who we are, mm-hmm. um, we are inevitably putting a false bottom on our ability to express our fullness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when we are in the emptiness, what we are doing by not defining anything or not putting any shackles on it is we are putting us, ourselves in a position in which we can express the full potential that, that we are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's like God, as soon as you start trying to define God, you are ultimately compromising what that experience is about it is not something that can be put into words you know so the emptiness allows us to be in the full capacity of who we are mm. and the great paradox is that people when when i think of emptiness and emotion you know in my ego self i'm like oh now i'm not feeling anything so i'm just numb but the beauty of emptiness and emotion is is that what's actually being experienced is that in, 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 as, as I've come to experience is that all emotions are present, but balanced. They're there in, in, in a unity and they're balanced. Now one emotion isn't overriding another emotion. And my ego self experiences that as, as emptiness, but it's, it's an illusion. Um, and what it actually is, is it's a place of neutrality. And in the book, in this literature, we're constantly called to a position of neutrality. Mm. And this is the, you know, emptiness is, is, is a little bit more nuanced and, and um, it's actually a really beautiful thing because we tend, science doesn't get emptiness at all. And they're kind of, the way we think of emptiness is just this void of nothingness. But um, I feel like, Emptiness has to be redefined and reinterpreted because um, we've been so obsessed with the material world. We've been so obsessed with identifying with the body. We've been so obsessed with these other things that we've, we've given emptiness in the immaterial world a very, very shallow definition. Yeah. And, um, you know, science by its own admission now is – is like trying, you know, they've got dark matter, they've got antimatter, they've got this, they've got that, they've, you know, <laughs> but that's emptiness. All that stuff mm-hmm. that they now, you know, that's at the spearhead of their discovery, that, that is emptiness. And um, for me, as I've come to understand it, yeah. with, uh, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a professional when it comes to quantum physics by mm-hmm. any or, or science by any stretch of the imagination. And it's, right. and it's paradoxical too, because it's really within the, within the emptiness and the so-called darkness, there's really light, you know, you know, I, I'm reminded of a phrase that Joshua tells us, Jesus or Joshua, you know, he says, um, you have eyes, but you do not see. And, mm. you know, the true vision is, is the inward vision, you know, of the, the Christ vision the, the vision, you know, we see from the eyes of the heart, as the course of love says, we begin, we mm. no longer look without, we look within, and we begin to see with the eyes of the heart. And so there's really, it's paradoxical, because in the emptiness, there's really, there's light, too. I mean. <laughs> but this is, I mean, Lynn, you've brought me to, you know, I, I, you know, goosebumps, because this is the paradoxical nature, you know, the light and dark that we talk about um, most of the time it is is an illusion, mm-hmm. you know. And the darkness, fear, is created by the illusion light, which is love. But that's the love of the ego. Mm-hmm. And the paradoxical thing is that the darkness is the darkness of emptiness is actually the spiritual light that we find in all the spiritual literature is such a and and it's why you know we are called 
It's why we're called to see the light with our eyes closed. It's one mm -hmm. of the lines in the book. We're called to see the light with our eyes closed. Mm -hmm. For me, the truth is centered in understanding and trusting something that cannot be explained. Mm. Yes. And when I sink into the darkness, when I allow myself to be in that emptiness, there's a stillness and there's a clarity. Mm. And within that place, a dialogue emerges, something very clear, a voice can be heard mm. and information can be understood. Truth can be understood. Beautiful. And that's at the end of the day is why I always want to kind of have a go at science because it cannot <laughs> explain those things. Um, but it's a useful tool. It's yeah. a useful tool and it's actually part of the experience. It's part of what has helped me to really embrace this whole experience. Wow. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all that, Tyrone. And we are kind of running up on our time. <laughs> Is there anything else like you want to just kind of like wrap it up, like sum up anything else that's really jumping out at you either from from these pages or just from your own heart, you know, whatever. Uh, I, you know, I, don't, I feel like we've discussed so much more than I could have ever anticipated could be discussed in, in this period of time. Um, I just think, yeah, it, I had something about this pattern that's repeated over and over again. And we have to make the journey through the false selves. Mm. Those are stepping stones that allow us to get to the emptiness um, without losing our minds, without, you know, losing our connection to the world, you know, because although we're not supposed to be in the world, we, of the world, we still need to be in the world. Mm. And, you know, that journeyness to the emptiness, you know, that journey to the emptiness it needs to be arrived at through stages of development, you know, and often in the, in the core, in, in this, in this, um, a course of love, he, you know, it, it refers to stages of development. Mm -hmm. um, Becoming. And yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we have to, it's, I don't, I feel like we have to give ourselves permission to go through those phases of development, every false self that I've experienced has been a beautiful gift. Mm. And it's been something that, you know, has gone, you know, there's been different emotional roller coasters with those false identities, but each one of them has allowed me, has been a stepping stone that's allowed me to, to come into the emptiness and experience the fullness of it. Yeah. And so, yeah, just that permission, you know, we, yeah. we are, to make the to journey right and yeah the stages of becoming yes that's very mm -hmm. clear in the course of love so yeah well thank you so much tyrone it's just such an honor to have you as our first guest on our new series wisdom of the heart uh, thank, you, thank you and, and likewise yeah mm -hmm. who's watching and listening and then next time we will have another guest and another topic from a course of love so, Brilliant. all right, everyone, peace, blessings, and love to everybody. Brilliant. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you.